The plot twist is a strangely misused element of storytelling. We all understand what a twist is, but in recent media it's often used not because there's a reason to, but because it's expected. It's not there for a specific reason in the story, people just think it's necessary. A twist by nature is meant to surprise you, but the surprise is actually not the main goal of a plot twist. A twist is meant to invest you deeper into a story you're already grounded in. The surprise is merely a vehicle that gets you there. And this is why a twist that is surprising is not always good. In fact, twists that are uh, too surprising can often be the worst twists. Twists are treated like a necessary part of the formula for so many movies nowadays. And this is so bad that it poisons whole franchises. Certain attempts at ending long-form stories likely would have been better had the creators not been so intent on trying to surprise the audience with how they ended it. However, my point is not that twists are bad, rather that they're simply a time and a place. The twist is a much more effective tool in a story we're not already invested in. If your audience is already really invested in your story, and your surprise is too big, then you're not going to invest them deeper into the story, you're gonna pull them out of it and make them mad. It's much more effective of a tool when used in a story that we don't realize we want to be invested in. A story that the audience doesn't even necessarily realize is actually a story until it's too late. But what kind of story is that though? I mean, you don't start watching a movie or reading a book because you intend to fully ignore the story. So what other reason is there to start? Well... Let me paint you a picture! So, video games, for example, have stories. Uh, but you don't go in necessarily for the story, you go in for the uh, fun game mechanics. Let's say we have a game where the mechanic is, uh, you have a gun that shoots portals. Let, let's just use that as a crazy random game mechanic that could be used. We're gonna set it in, I don't know, just like a, a science fiction laboratory. And there's an, uh, a, a robot lady. But like, we don't just want the player to do some puzzles for this robot lady and then the game ends. That's, that's not really fun. Uh, so what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna add a twist. Uh, this robot lady is actually evil. Regardless, I'm, I, this is Portal. I'm describing Portal, one of the most influential video games ever made, rather than what it could have been, which is a puzzle game with a somewhat interesting mechanic. I hope that works in editing. I, I, I rambled and didn't follow the script and barely actually used the whiteboard, so. It's a type of story I call an unexpected narrative. It's any story where you aren't coming for the story, but the story ends up being what makes you stay. It's especially common in video games. I already talked about Portal, but Undertale, Pikmin 3, Doki Doki Literature Club, all modern Kirby games, and every Five Nights at Freddy's game are all examples of this kind of story just off the top of my head. Some of these don't even have plot twists, but they all rope you in with fun gameplay while hiding a deeply compelling story under their surface. Plot twist! This is not a video about plot twists. This is a video about the medium in which I think plot twists are most effective. A plot twist is a tool. The unexpected narrative is the situation in which that tool ought to be used. It's where that tool is its most effective. And this video isn't about video games either. See, if movies have a hard time getting people in seats for things other than stories and characters, video games have the opposite problem. Accessibility. See, anyone can go see a movie or watch a TV show, but for a video game, you have to be good enough at the video game to get through all of it. And if you're not good at the game, if you don't think the game mechanics are fun, then you're not going to get through just learning those mechanics in order to find the plot twist that, whoa, there's a story that I actually enjoy here. You won't ever reach the point where that moment of surprise and 
storytelling can affect you. If only there were some medium that could solve both problems at once. Hi, I'm Joe, and welcome to The Subfeed, a show where I talk about online video entertainment. I'm sure you definitely didn't see coming the fact that this is the medium I've been building up to talking about, considering I'm on the background I use for subfeed videos. Online video is not primarily a platform for narrative-driven content. There are exceptions, of course, and I've talked about many of those exceptions on the show. Those exceptions are the reason I have this show. But even I don't primarily use platforms like YouTube to watch those exceptions. Usually when I'm on YouTube, I'm either falling asleep to funny let's plays, multitasking and listening to chill video game music remixes, or distracting myself from responsibilities with funny parodies of things I liked as a child. And yet these two are platforms for storytelling in their own rights. Don't believe me? Just watch. <sighs> Meet Siva Gunner. Siva Gunner is basically a parody of YouTube channels like Gilva Sunner that upload rips of song files from video games. The average video on the channel appears to be just that, an upload of an unedited song from a video game. But then, partway through the video, the melody would change and you realize, oops, this has been edited, I've been goofed on. Sometimes what it changes to is a fitting thing to parody the original song with, but more often than not, it's changed to one of the channel's staple memes, which at first primarily consisted of the Flintstones theme and this song from some anime I've never watched. I hope this doesn't have to strike me. I'm playing a clip so you understand what I'm talking about, but I don't know if this is a copyrighted thing. This song, Snow Halation, was a particularly disliked gag on the channel. Videos that featured this song often received massive dislike bombs from disgruntled commenters who were tired of hearing it. And this is the point at which the storyline starts. A mysterious voice takes over one of the rips and declares that it is rebooting the channel, that it's removing all these disliked gags, not just snow halation, but the Flintstones as well. And these memes would be replaced with newer, more uh, better polished manufactured memes that would please the masses more. To retell the full story of the Siva Gunner lore would be tedious and filled with references I'd need to take time to explain to you, so I won't do it. This isn't the best way for you to experience that story. The best way for you to experience this story about toxic fandom and a corrupt manufactured corporate entity attempting to appease that fanbase is through the very music that is being affected by those two conflicting groups. That's why it was told that way. Unexpected narratives just hit different. But video game music was just one of the things I said I watch YouTube for. Let's transition into one of the others, um, like Funny Let's Plays. And by Funny Let's Plays, I mean the saga of a warrior. An artist with a destiny. A story best told by the commentators of the very tournament this fighter, this artist, this me, was the champion of. The CPU CS doesn't start out as the epic tale I just described it as. It starts out as a joke tournament between computer players in Smash Bros that the Let's Players Alpharad and Joe Sniffy and sometimes my boy Major Duncan commentate over as if it's a real tournament. And it's because of how seriously they take that bit that the characters and story slowly begin to take shape. Now. If you're familiar with the CPU CS, you probably will recognize that this isn't totally a great example of what I'm trying to talk about, but I love the CPU CS and I think it works within the context of uh, my larger points here, so I'm going to use it as an example anyway. This story would not exist without the uncontrollable AI playing the game in strange and amusing ways, but it also wouldn't exist without the commentators committing hard enough to the bit that they give each of these characters motivation and life and purpose. By taking it so seriously and injecting so much personality into this series, they invite us to take it seriously and become invested as well. And so, we do. Anything can be an interesting story. 
An interesting story can be told in so many different ways. Perhaps a certain medium is simply better suited to emphasize a certain part of a narrative, and to emphasize the aspects you want to emphasize, you need a different medium. This allows an audience to truly focus on what makes this story unique. It allows them to really embrace and understand the nuances of the themes of your specific story. The goal of an unexpected narrative is to get an audience so lost in the characters and the world that they stop caring that this isn't what they originally came for. They are so invested that they just want to see what happens next. I started this video talking about plot twists, and then uh, went on to talk about a medium of storytelling that may or may not use plot twists. But the reason I started talking about plot twists is because it's a story with a plot twist that was effective that got me thinking about this type of story in the first place. So, spoiler alert, but College Humor's Power Rangers parody isn't the lighthearted mockery of kids' mecha sci-fi it seems on the outside. Or rather, it is for most of the series, until right when the show thinks you've become invested in the main characters, we learn that they have been working for the real bad guy this whole time. After this is revealed, we spend a whole episode with the man we thought was the bad guy, but was actually trying to save the Earth the whole time. Suddenly, the colorful, homemade science fiction world is gone, replaced by a lifeless, realistic office. The way it's shot is totally different, there's depth of field and the camera moves, none of which would be shocking without the series building up to this point. To understand this story of a lonely space wizard selling insurance to pay his bills while he tries to save a world he's not even from, we have to first understand that world. We have to understand why it's shocking that this man is actually a sad. We must first understand that world, and why that world views him as the villain, and as a loser, as a joke. My dog is here, by the way. The twist doesn't invalidate our experience so far, because we already understood the joke, we just didn't understand that it's also deeply sad. It's not telling us we were wrong for laughing, because the characters in the show were laughing too. Uh, it just lets us know that now there's a far more compelling story. It's not just a cheap laugh, it's also a story that will last with us. It's not changing the story we thought we were watching, it's drawing us into a story we didn't even realize was being told. So, what's the point? That I really like these videos and wanted to talk about them? Yes. But actually, no. I think they're worth checking out, but this isn't a review so much as it's meant to be an encouragement to someone out there with a weird story idea. So many of you are talented, and I'm sure, or I hope, one of you will be inspired by this to make the next great unexpected story. Don't be afraid to make it weird, but do the weird things with purpose, with intent, in order to better show the parts of your story that really excite you. Build a world where we're not watching, and then break it in a way that forces us to pay attention.